being stuck in the Rosarsa Greenland for two and a half days because of bad weather, I took the time to inspect the engine of Magnus. As expected, no leaks, everything was looking good, and everything was ready to go all the way to Canada. They're close. So here's the airport, and here we're supposed to fly out. Yes. And all of this area here is closed. Today is totally closed. Yeah. We see nothing. That's what the heli say. That's what the heli says, and what, that's what the staff in Narsak Heliport is saying. Oh, okay. Cool. As you can see, the weather was pretty bad. Visibility was a few hundred meters, and the cloud cover was very, very low. If you look here at the hill, you can see how low the cloud cover was. But as soon as the weather cleared, I put on the immersion suit. I had about one or two hours window to get out of there. The only problem was that once I go, I couldn't come back because the weather was going to get bad again. And that's the survival stuff on my wing. The flight was to be from Narsarsui, Greenland, all the way across the North Atlantic Ocean to the American continent, Goose Bay in Canada. And it would take seven and a half hours if I was lucky. And I was super excited about it. I installed on the tail of Magnus for the first time the Insta360 camera. And here, this is how it looks sitting on the tail. Running on the runway, I was taking off with Magnus turned immediately to the west so that I could see the other side of the bay, which was not possible to see from the airport. As you can see, the cloud cover was still there, but there were a few holes in the sky that I could climb through. I used an iceberg that was just off the runway, there it is, to turn left into the fjord to start flying out to the Atlantic Ocean. Ahead of me was about a 40 minute flight, just like I flew back in. And here, the filming inside the cockpit, you can see that I'm turning the plane to the left, facing the fjord and starting to fly outside to the Atlantic Ocean. And over here in a moment, you'll see the runway that appears perpendicular to Magnus and me. There's the runway. And I'm flying at about 300 feet because there was a little bit of cloud cover above me and I wanted to get a good picture and view of the fjord. I gotta say that flying next to these icebergs even though it was my second time, it was simply amazing. I mean, just look at that, that looks unreal. And this is the Insta360 camera filming it from the side. And you can see how low the cloud was, but there were a few holes above me. But I decided to stay inside the fjord because I was just having a blast flying through this amazing fjord all the way to the Atlantic. Being an optimist, I used the two and a half days I was stuck in the Sarsovic to plan this flight really, really well. And I had planned thoroughly how I was going to fly through the fjord all the way out to the northern Atlantic. Here you can see me climbing over the electro cables that are strung across the fjord. And I knew that at the end of fjord, I'd have a big, big, thick patch of clouds. And therefore, I decided to stay relatively low the whole way until the end. Because I don't like the idea of climbing above clouds and not seeing the mountain tops that are below me. Here you can see I'm working that uh, Insta360 stick, filming as I'm flying inside the fjord. And very soon you will see that we arrived the thick patch of clouds where I will find a nice crack and climb right through the cloud over into the entrance to the Atlantic Ocean. And there it is. Big, big, thick party cloud. I slipped right under it, went past the MDB station on the left, and you can see there's a tiny crack there, which I'll go through to in a few seconds. And this is me with Magnus. After we climb through the crack over the clouds, we're here at about 7,500 feet. We had to go much, much higher than expected, and we're flying over the clouds. And soon the weather will be crystal clear with blue ocean all the way to Canada for about six hours. And there it is. This is how it was for about six hours all the way to Canada. It was beautiful, picturistic, and totally surreal flying over the Atlantic. I did have, however, a headwind which slowed me down, but it worked out in the end. 
And after nearly six hours in the air, there it is, the Northern American continent, me happy in the cockpit, Canada right in front of me. But I still had another hour and 40 minutes to go over the lakes of Canada, which are beautiful. And this is me singing and dancing in the cockpit, super happy. And when I saw Goose Bay over the horizon, and then I saw the runway, boy was I a happy puppy. After over seven and a half hours in the cockpit, finally I'm on final to land at Goose Bay. This is an airport with a lot of history in it. Many, many aircraft since the Second World War have flown from here back and forth to Europe. And I was privileged to land here in Goose Bay, Canada. As I landed, the sun slowly set. And by the time I got out of the cockpit, it was nearly totally dark. But I was happy. I was happy with myself. I was happy with Magnus that brought me here all the way from Hungary. And the next day, I'd be flying into the United States from Goose Bay to Seven Islands Airport. So I'll be seeing you there. Bye for now.